How's it going everyone here? Sebastian at Cost of Performance. Uh, what we're going to be talking a little bit about today is postural cues and postural adjustments for athletes during their courses of exercise. So this kind of pertains a little bit more to youth athletes, more novice, unexperienced lifters, unexperienced movers, but it is also super translatable for older athletes as it's something that we take on through our life. Again, addressing it more towards youth athletes to start things off though. So one of the big things that we see a lot of obviously is there's always a lot of compensation from that upper back from that spine uh, when it comes to learning new movements you see it a lot with squats with lunges with you know any sort of hinging movement we always find that that spine is one of the toughest things to kind of control and get kids to understand how to keep it neutral as we like to say that kind of that straight line and avoiding any excessive compensations the best that we can. So one of the big ways that we need to do this and that we need to be addressing it with our athletes is making sure that everything is kind of in a comfortable position. A lot of times you hear, like I just said, a neutral spine, but neutral is different on each person. So getting to know the athlete, getting to see how they move and putting them in a nice position where everything is stacked on top of themselves, everything's relaxed. So when they move, whether it, again, it's hinging, sprouting, lunging, whatever it is, every Everything stays in a nice neutral position. That way we can start to translate that more into sport specific movements. We always kind of use Djokovic as one of the best returners in the game and he is in that nice posture position where he's got his open and keeping everything in a nice comfortable position that allows for better rotation and allows for him to move a little bit better. So that's one of the big reasons why we have to introduce that to athletes at a very very young age so that when they're moving it becomes more of a natural pattern for them when they start again loading ground strokes we start throwing medicine balls at them we start rotating whether it may be golf or whatever it is we need to keep, make sure that we know as a young athlete what a neutral and comfortable spine is for us now this is again something that we can address as we get older as well because a lot of what tennis does is puts these asymmetries into our body where it'll lock opposite shoulder down to the opposite hip. So we kind of are put into this little bit of a corkscrew to where when I'm moving, when I'm squatting, you'll see a shift and you'll see a drop in shoulders, okay? Now again, this is something that we have to battle with constantly because we're you know, competing with years and years of tennis and years and years of ingrating these patterns, but that's something that we like to really focus on here at Cost of Performance is making sure everything is as in line as it can be for the given athlete. So if we are looking at an athlete that's lunging, whatever it may be, and we see that shoulder dropping in, we have to not just think about the shoulder because a lot of times if we say drive that shoulder back, what will happen is they'll rotate their hips in the wrong direction or we'll get some valgus at the knee and other little things like that. So it's making sure that all of those little asymmetries are kind of aligning or unaligning themselves to find more of that center line and whatever that may be. Now, again, one of the big ways that we think about this is I, I don't love the term, but we use it constantly is just posture, right? Constantly we're telling athletes, chest up, good posture. Now again, posture is kind of a very subjective term, but it is something that everyone understands really, really well, right? A good posture isn't here, right? It isn't the head pushing forward. It's everything again, stacked on top of itself in a very strong and secure position. This is something again, that we have to translate through basic movements such as walking and we have to take it into lunging and squatting and hinging and all those other patterns and making sure we can translate that into force development through sprinting or jumping and whatever it is that's why we have to build all of these building blocks in from a young age so when they get out to that court they're a lot more like Djokovic in that good posture good position so they can track the ball easier as they go 